Hi guys, my Sky RC speed meter that I wanted to put on the radio control cars has got a Duff battery in it. Um, I think I've mentioned it either in a previous video or certainly in the comments that the battery that's in there, which is a little LiPo, just doesn't seem to hold charge. I've ordered some replacements. But in the meantime, I have been using it, and it does work for a while. Uh, I took it out today, and by the time I'd actually put it on the car and waited for people to get out of the way so I could give the car a little run along the footpath, I watched it turn itself off, because the power went. Turn it on. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. Screen flashes while it finds the satellites, but up here there's actually a there should be a solid bar where the battery is, but it's actually empty. So that's going to switch itself off in a few seconds. What I could have done had I thought about it was I could have used one of these power pods that I got from Poundland. Um, they will actually give it some charge. And that will slowly charge up. Again, I don't know if the camera will pick that up or not. Probably not too much glare on the screen. But yeah, that's putting some charge into it. But what I think I'll do, while I'm waiting for the replacement batteries to arrive, is do one of my favourite little mods. Take one of these power packs apart and use the battery that's inside. It's a lithium it's a lithium iron battery. That means it's got a hard metal case. And it doesn't come with a charging circuit. That thing there is to give you the right output voltage to step it from 3.7 volts to 5 volts. And the actual chip on there does, I believe, have the circuitry in it to make it into a charger if you wire it up correctly. Big Clive did a video on it quite a while ago. But what I'm going to do if I can get the foam off from underneath. What I'm going to do is just convert that by putting that little plug on it so we can plug it in there and use that to keep the speed meter running while we're waiting for the replacement batteries to arrive. And what I'm going to do So I'm actually going to solder onto those tags, solder that onto those tags, so we don't actually need that. I have got rather a lot of these, I save them because I've taken a lot of these apart. So one day I might find a use for them. Alright, what I'm going to do is, like I can say, literally solder straight on the top of there. The case is, I can't remember whether it's a negative or positive. Uh, let's put a meter on it. Because quite a few times I've made the mistake of leaving one of these laying around with the wires loose. And if the wrong one touches the case, it's a straight short circuit and they overheat. Yeah, if you leave them 
trimmed off like that and it touches on there, it's a short circuit. Right, can we see that meter? Yes, we can see that meter. If I go on there with the positive and go on there, nothing. If I go on there, 3.7 volts. So yeah, the case is positive and that contact is negative. So if you leave that black lead with the end open and touch it on there, you'll actually short circuit the battery. And when you're cutting like this, um, with your metal knife, again, same thing if you actually short it onto the case, then you're causing yourself a problem. Right, I'm just going to nip that off. Just there. And nip that one off just there. That's the sort of thing I mean, if you're cutting there and you come round and touch the metal case. I think I've said this half a dozen times now, you'll short it out. It's just that I've done it several times without thinking about it. And it's easy to do, which is why I'm leaving this Captan tape, tape in place so there's less chance of me actually shorting it out. Right, solder. Solder. So we can see what we're doing. Can we remember which was positive and which was negative? That was the negative one. That's the positive one. So that basically is job done. I will put some tape around that. Might pay to have shortened that red one a bit, mightn't it? Just so it's all nice and neat. Yeah, I might do that. That loud bang that you might have heard just then in the background, out in the road we have what we used to call sleeping policemen, raised humps in the road to slow the traffic down. And some builders rather like driving over it at speed in their um, pickup trucks, what you want to call them, where they've got loads of stuff in the back. So it bounces up and down and makes a loud bang. Right, that should be finished. I haven't charged it, it will have charge in it because they come charged. But before I plug it in, I'll just check that the positive and negative are the same way around. Look, they're not. Can you see that? So if I plug that in there, I'll be going negative to positive. So we need to swap the wires over in there. I need a pin to do that. I've just brought that up close so you can see. Yeah, the negative and positive are reversed. So I've got to reverse them on the on the plug that I'm just going to put in there. I should be able to put a pin underneath those little plastic tags and pull the contacts out.
with a bit of care. <laughs> Could probably do with three hands. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this and you see it at the same time. Alright, that's one. Don't let them touch together. Alright, can we do this so you can see it? Pull that one out. Put it in on the other side. That one's not going home, why not? That's better. Right. So they're the right way round. For that but before I do plug it in I will just check that one now that's the right way round but I'm just going to put a meter on there and check I need to put my probes on the meter so we can check that All right, I've actually got a connector on the end of there that gives me two pins that I can touch on so yeah, that's the right way round. So, that was worth checking. They haven't reversed the wiring on the battery. They've just, just those leads that I've got. A little bag full of them. Let's just see if the others are the same. Yeah, that's the one I've just changed over, and that's one fresh out the bag, so, yeah, okay, we'll put some Captan tape over there, First, remember the red is the same as the case, positive. So now if I push that one down on top of it, it's got a layer of tape between it and that contact, terminal contact. I'm glad I bought that. I put off buying some for ages and then eventually decided I'd have to have some and it's been very useful. Right, so that, I do have a charger that I can plug that into and charge it up. But that should be safe to put in there now. And if we turn it on, And we should be okay. It's lost the time, but I can reset the time and all the rest of it.
Oh, actually, it should find the time. Just looking at the charge, the battery charge, that's a, only two bars on the battery there. So I'll have to put that battery on charge. But hopefully that'll last a bit better than the little one that was in there. Obviously that's going to be a bit heavier now, which is annoying. Thinking about it, I should be able to charge it by uh, plugging into there. It's got a charging circuit in it. So I'll try that. Put that on charge, see if it charges it right up. Just for the record, yes, I've done this quite a few times. <laughs> right, that does appear to be charging. So we'll leave it and see if we can get a full charge into it. Well, I left it charging and it says it's fully charged now. So it looks like that works. Just do that again because that was out of focus. Yeah, I've just blue tacked it on the bottom for now. As I say, that is only a temporary battery. So we'll see see how long it lasts for in fact I think what I'll do is I'll leave it switched on and see what time it switches itself off thanks for watching if you want more information check down below in the video description if you like this video you might like this one up here and if you want to subscribe you can check out my channel over here. Up here is my latest video on my channel and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched. Thanks again for watching.